Mr. Noon Chi, Noon Chi, Mr. President, I'd like to make amendment to my statement yesterday regarding the evacuation of people. There was a meeting, an extraordinary meeting of the Central and Standing Committees in mid-1974. I'd like to add that to my statement. So there was a meeting by the Standing Committee and members of the Central Committee in mid-1974 in deciding to evacuate the people from Phnom Penh and from other provincial towns. Thank you. The President, thank you for the information. Judge Lavange, you may now proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Nunchia, with respect to what you have just informed us of, can you please specify if Mr. Yang Sari and Kyo Sampan also attended that extraordinary meeting of the Central Committee and the Standing Committee that took place in mid-1974, during which the evacuation of Phnom Penh was discussed. Response, Mr. President, Your Honours. Ying Sari or Kiu Sampon was not present during that meeting. Est-ce que cette réunion Were there any minutes or summaries or notes taken during the meeting? Was any record taken of the meeting of the Central Standing Committee? No. Response. In that meeting, the Standing Committee participated in the meeting except Mr. Ying Sari as he was abroad. And for the Central Committee, only certain members attended. And after the meeting, members of the Standing Committee and the Central Committee were instructed to disseminate information in their respective zone regarding the decision. Therefore, according to you, Mr. Nunchia, were Mr. Kyo Sampan and Yang Sari aware of some of the decisions made during that meeting? Was it possible that they were unaware of the political line formulated during that meeting? to evacuate Phnom Penh. Well, that response. From my understanding, as he did not attend the meeting, he was not aware of it. Pas exactly la question. It's not exactly the question I was putting to you, Mr. Nonchia. You stated that following that meeting, All participants were ordered to disseminate news of the decision taken during that meeting so that the decisions could be implemented. I'm not sure what those decisions were, but that's what I gather from your statement. Once again, my question is this. Were either Mr. Kyu Sampan or Mr. Yang Sari informed of that decision? Did they receive news of the decisions taken during that extraordinary meeting. 
response let me make the following comments Mr. Ian Sari was abroad at the time and as for Mr. Kiel Sampon he had his different task he was tasked to make a list of costing he had no business to do with the evacuation or otherwise of the people it was not his task Mr. Nunchia. Mr. Nunchia. As of when was Mr. Kyo Sampan a candidate member of the Central Committee? During that meeting, was he already a full member of the Central Standing Committee? The response from my recollection he was not yet a candidate member of the Standing Committee. Allow me to make the following comments. The Standing Committee did not have any candidate member. Candidate members only exist in the Central Committee, recruited from the members of the full-fledged Standing Committee members. Once again, there is no candidate member for the Standing Committee. Doc. Therefore, when did Mr. Kyo Sampan become a full-fledged member of the Standing Central Committee? Response. I apologize as I cannot recollect the date. Et plus généralement, est-ce que pour Generally speaking, based on your memory, when do you think Mr. Kyo Sampan became a member of the Central Standing Committee for the Communist Party of Kampuchea. So, response. Joanna, as I already said, I was not close to Mr. Q Sampon. I only knew that he was from France and he was a member of the party but I did not know when he joined the party. One day in, in 1974 or 73 rather, Bobo called me and told me that Comrade, you don't have to worry about the intellectuals who arrived from overseas because you, Comrade, you only have to implement the, the lines for the front for those intellectuals. For that reason, I do not have anything to do with the intellectuals arriving from overseas. I was also told that the situation had changed and that I shall only focus on the education, on training. Je reviens à cette... I wish to return to the matter of the extraordinary meeting that was held by the Central committee and the standing committee was there a deliberate decision to exclude Mr. Kyo Sampan from that very meeting
response uh, what do you mean by removing or sacking him you mean to remove him from the meeting Une décision no, a decision to not summon him to the meeting was a decision taken to leave him out of the meeting during which you talked about the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Men, men. Response. I, I don't believe there was any authority to exclude him from the meeting as I said earlier, only members of the standing committees, except Yung Seri, participated in the meeting, as well as some members of the central committee. That is all. However, Mr. Nunchia, if you tell me that only certain members took part in that meeting, it was because some members were invited and others were not. Therefore, why were some members summoned to that meeting and why were others left out? Response. From my recollection, it was decided by the secretary of the zone. And as for the center, Only some members of the Central Committee were invited and for the zone, it was up to the zone secretary to decide on who to ch choose to attend the meeting. Que Monsieur que pense? Was Mr. Kyo Sampan involved at the zone level? Or did he work with the Central Committee? Response. He was not a member of a zone. And I did not know when he became a member of the Central Committee, as I stated earlier. I was only told by Pol Pot that I should not worry about him about them because Pol Pot will would deal with the intellectuals arriving from overseas. He would manage them. You are well aware that Mr. Kyo Sampan was a member of the Central Committee. Is this True or not? Were you aware of it? Some response. Joanna, I did not know. Now, if you were unaware, or you were unaware that he was a member of the Central Committee, the committee, but you were not sure that he was present at the meeting. Is that accurate? Response. It was up to the secretary of the party, that is Paul Pot, as who he would call for a meeting or how many, depending on the necessity of the situation. If he deemed it's important, then he would do, do so. Otherwise, they would have to just do the task that they were assigned to.
with respect to the uh, interior forces and Mr. Yang Sari, at the time, where was Mr. Yang Sari? Was he in Peking? Response. I cannot respond to your question, John, as it was not my responsibility. And therefore, you were completely unaware as to whether or not members of the Standing Committee had any contact with Mr. Yang Sari. You were never informed of any form of communication between the Standing Committee and Mr. Yang Sari during that period. Response. During that period, every five or six months, I saw Mr. Ying Sari returning from overseas. However, I did not have any business to deal with him. If he needed, he only contact, contacted the secretary of the party, that is Pol Pot. Therefore, during the time that Mr. Yang Sari was in Peking, he had the means to be in contact with Mr. Pol Pot. Response. I did not know because they did their business by themselves. Allow me to clarify further. In the internal affairs of the party, everybody only minded his or her own business. I only minded my own business. I was already responsible for the task I was assigned to. I had no business to ask about somebody else's business or affairs. That person shall be responsible for his or her own affair. That is the principle of secrecy. Even after the liberation, the principle of the party still exists. So we, if we need, need to know something, then we will be allowed to know by the secretary of the party. And it's equal for every member of the committee of the party. And some of the secret informations were not revealed to any party. Mr. Nunchia, were you unaware of the role that Mr. Ying Sari played in Peking? Response. I only knew that Ying Sari was in Peking in order to liaise about the situation that was instructed by Pol Pot from Cambodia about the internal situation of the country. So that he would convey the message to China. That's all I knew. I, I, knew. I did not know the details of his work. Very well. We are going to move on to another question. Mr. Nunchia, you talked about the CPK political line. You talked about political struggle. And you talked about armed political struggle. Now, pursuant to those political lines, was there a difference between the Sangum regime and the struggle uh, concerning uh, the king father. What was his role within that political struggle? Response, Joanna. The Communist Party of Kampuchea 
did not have a political line against Samdai Sihanu. There was only a line of respecting Samdai Sihanu, of inviting him to take up the position as the president of the state presidium. That was the highest authority. Mr. Nunchia, forgive me for interrupting you. I'm not talking about what happened after 1975. We are still talking about historical background. And I wish to talk about Sankum. So at the time, what was the CPK's position vis-à-vis -vis His Majesty Sihanouk? Response. At that time, the Democratic Cambodia had a strategic line and a front line. The front line of the Democratic Cambodia clearly states that all forces from all strata shall be mobilized, including the royal family who are patriotic or who are nationalist, including the king, in order to mobilize as much forces as possible except except in the circumstances where the elements of the remnants of the re the elements of the imperialist monsieur nunchia is Mr. Nunchia, am I to understand, therefore, from the very beginnings of the CPK political lines, it was conceived to form an alliance with His Majesty Sihanouk? Response. During that time, the CPK not only formed an alliance with the king, but also regarded the king as of a sacred status for all the Cambodian people. Mr. Nunchia. Mr. Nunchia, do you remember what happened in March 1963 when 34 people considered to be leftists uh, were summoned to the royal palace? in order, as they were told, to set up a uh, unified government. Response. Your Honours, I only receive that information, but as to whom were summoned, I do not know, because I was not involved in that front. But I learned the information via radio broadcast. According to you, who was in the group of 34 people? Were the two other co-accused present in this room part of the list? 
ดยขยมบานจุ่มเรียบแล้วจากขยมเป็นจำจมวดนี้ Council you may now proceed Council s o n a r u n If I am not mistaken, I would like to ask uh, Judge uh, Levenge. I ask for your clarification to avoid any confusion. You mentioned that on March 23, uh, that was the that was the date uh, when the uh, His Majesty uh, Nuruddin s i n u uh, summoned uh, 34 members of the Communist Party of Cambodia. If you pointed to that uh, date, it was not uh, correct because uh, on that date, uh, uh, His Majesty uh, s i n u was in Beijing at that time. He was not in Cambodia. I would like to ask for that clarification, Your Honor. Thank you. Alors, en mars 63, in March 1963, there was a summons to the royal palace. Whether it was sent out by King Norodom s i a n u k I think that the invitations were clearly destined for a certain number of guests who were considered to be leftists, and apparently the aim was to prepare. A left-wing government. Is this clear, Mr. n u n c h i r or do you have different memories of this event? Mr. n u n c h i r your honours, as I informed you earlier. I was not involved in that, and it was not my area of responsibilities either, because my main responsibility was to educate people at the base level, and more importantly, I uh, mainly focus on the uh, the political standpoint of members as well as uh, the uh, consensus. The, the concern of the uh, people, and as for the management at the apparatus level, I was not uh, involved, and I did not pay attention to that as well because it was none of my business. Uh, my area of responsibility was totally different. Mr. Nunchia, when did Mr. Nunchia, when did Pol Pot and Mr. Yang Seri? Go underground. When did they leave for the jungle? Some k i m g o up low. k i m c h a m a n c h a b a d e n'a pas été traduite. Je ne sais pas si c'était traduit en anglais. We did not hear the French interpretation of that. So, Mr. n u n c h e r could I please ask you to repeat your answer? Pouvez-vous réponse, M. n u n c h e r Response: I cannot recollect it. Vous vous souvenez pas de la question? You cannot recollect the question I asked you or the date when Pol Pot uh, went into the Maki. Response: I do not. I cannot recollect the date when Pol Pot and i n g s e r i went into the jungle.
And in your view, why did they go into the jungle? Response. Your Honor, to the best of my recollection, the government back then, the Lonal administration, and Sri Matak, as well as Singok Thang. sought all the ways in order to allege or accuse the intellectuals of being rude or red. That's what I learned uh, and I overheard it from rumors and word of mouth. And they intended to arrest those intellectuals. Consequently, those intellectuals they are not live in Phnom Penh. Instead, they took refuge in the jungle. They live in the so-called Maki jungle. And I did not know for myself what it was, what it was meant by Maki. Je, je n'ai pas eu de traduction en français. Uh, is there a, a problem with the French channel? I didn't get the translation. À nouveau, je n'ai pas de traduction en français de ce qui vient d'être dit par le président. Donc je pense qu'il y a un problème de communication entre la cabine anglaise. I believe that there is a technical problem between the English and the French channels, says Judge Laverne. The President. Yes, Judge Levenge, you may continue. Can it be said that after Pol Pot and Yang Sadi's departure, you stayed in Phnom Penh and you were the most senior CPK official in the city as a result. But Response, that was correct. And even though I was residing in Phnom Penh, but I was not the senior, the most senior person or most responsible person because the overall management and leadership of the party was led by the secretary. In those days, were you called brother number two already, or if not, when did they start calling you that? Response. Your Honor, in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, there was no such a thing as brother number one, number two, and number three. Number 
one or number two here I think was derived from the cult of Vietnam. Particularly those Cambodians who left for Vietnam following the Geneva Conference. Certain number of Cambodian people, approximately 1,500 of them, went to Vietnam. Those Cambodians returned to Cambodia and they brought, they brought along with them uh, this culture. But in the Communist Party of Cambodia, there was no such a thing as brother number one, number two. We only address each other by brother or so. Were you number two in the hierarchy of the CPK? Response. Again, I am not brother number two, but I was the deputy secretary of the party. So brother number two to me seems too big for me, but if I was addressed as the deputy secretary, which means that I am just one step below the secretary. But I have never, I had never used a brother number two in the party, and I did not want anyone to address me as brother number two. And I believe that this name was given to me uh, because those who went to study in northern Vietnam and returned to Cambodia addressed me as brother number two. Mr. Nunchia, in the hierarchy, is there anybody between the Deputy Secretary and the Party Secretary? Or does the Deputy come straight after the Party Secretary? Your Honour, I do not quite catch your uh, question. Je vais la répéter. All right, let me repeat it. Pol Pot was the party secretary, you were the deputy secretary, and in the hierarchy, was there anybody in between the two of you? Or do you come in position number two in the hierarchy? Come in. Response, none. Alors, je voudrais... Let me come back to a very important event in the history of Cambodia, which is the 18th of March 1970. In your view, what state were the forces of the CPK in uh, when the coup d'état took place? Were this a significant body representing thousands of people? Tell us about it. Response. You refer to the 18th of March 1970. On the 18th of March 1970, It was the date when Prince Senu was ousted from power. Was, was that correct? Could you please present me the document? Vous parlez de quel document, monsieur? What document are we talking about? I believe that in the closing order it is perfectly clear that on the 18th of March 1970 there was a coup d'état 
unless you wish to contest that date, but I'm not quite sure how you would do that. Hello. The President, uh, Judge uh, Zong Mark Levenge, uh, please uh, refer to the exact date because uh, when the coup d'etat was uh, carried out, it was on the 18th of March 1970. But if you refer to uh, the 18th of April, there was no significant historical event. So uh, I would suggest that you refer to a specific uh, date uh, so he could uh, respond to that uh, specific event. So I would like to ask you for a clarification of the date. I believe I was talking about the 18th of March. Perhaps something was lost in translation and it became the 18th of April. But Mr. Nunche, I'm talking about the 18th of March 1970 and my question is as follows. What sort of state were the CPK forces in at that time? Give us a little bit of a feel for that. Your Honor. On the 18th of March, 1970, back then I was not in Phnom Penh city. I was attending a, an assembly in the eastern zone. But upon uh, learning that at the National Assembly under Sri Matak and uh, Luan Nol carry out the coup d'etat and it was successful so the uh, training and education in the eastern uh, zone was dispersed immediately because at that time the voluntary groups designated by Prince Sihanou who were considered the loyal forces of Prince Sienu, were subdivided into small groups in order to attack the small posts of the government and they seized uh, one or two rifles or guns. It was actually the a very outdated uh, gun. It was not an a modern gun and at that time as well there was the mass protest against the coup d'etat and this mass protest was carried out in favor of Prince Yanu and this movement gained momentum starting from the eastern zone and it spread across to Phnom Penh And those protesters were killed and sought by the uh, Lonnol soldier. But these protests gained momentum because there was a strong support from the uh, base in favor of Prince Sihanou, who maintained his neutral political line. And this movement gains momentum every time Actually, we did not uh, have any armed forces at that time. Following up on that movement, were there 
some cadres who were looking after the base movement but who didn't belong to the CPK were their adherents of Sihanouks, were they royalists involved as well and if so was there a sharing of responsibilities between the CPK and the royal forces response to my recollection at that times there was no a clear cut division all together both loyal forces and members of the communist party and communist party forces joined force in order to resist against the coup d'etat. And in addition to that, people at the base protested and demonstrated against the coup d'etat designed and conducted by Lonnol Click. So at that time there was a lot of oppressions by the then government. Who was at the very top of the FLPNK? FLPA and K, does this mean something to you? Your Honor, back then, I, I would like to ask you once again to which year you uh, are referring to. Are you referring to the date of the uh, coup d'etat or the date following the coup d'etat or the liberation date? I would like you to ask me on a specific date so that I could respond to you. Eh bien, je vous poser deux. Let me remind you. Can you tell us about the F? PLANK at the moment of the coup d'état and the same thing for the moment when Phnom Penh was taken. Response. Immediately after the coup d'état, Individuals responsible for each zone were the commander in military. And each zone was controlled by respective commanders and they did not actually uh, unified so even after the liberation, the Communist Party of Kampuchea did not has, have its own army. They, uh, the party rely on the military from the zone. But Pol Pot had been recognized as the commander-in-chief in army. Est-ce que... Among the zone leaders, did some of them not belong to the Communist Party of Kampuchea? Response The majority of the uh, zone uh, leaders were members of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler 
Could you tell us about the Paris Accords, signed in 1973 between the representatives of the Vietnamese communists and the Americans, and the consequences of those accords for Cambodia, in your view? Response Your Honor, the Paris Peace Accord between Vietnam and the United States In 1973, as you mentioned, at that time, Pham Hong, who was a party member of the Communist Party of Vietnam, asked me of my personal view, or he asked me, the overall perception of Cambodian people. If Vietnam entered into a peace agreement with the United States, and I responded, it was the internal affair of Vietnam As for Cambodian people, we would continue to resist and struggle. And as for the question of the overall perception of Cambodian people about that accord, I said we did not have any comment. We mind our own internal affairs and we uh, would not involved in the Vietnam internal affairs. At that time, uh, Mr. Wong face turned red. And I responded to him at that time that Cambodian people would continue to struggle. That was, that was all about that event. I also added that the Cambodian Revolution would not seek support from the Vietnamese communism. We are self-reliant and we decide the fate of our nation by ourselves. That was what I added. His rate became red. And then I reported that to Pol Pot. Pol Pot scolded me that I was not familiar with the foreign politics. And I, I told him, this is not about a foreign politics, this is a talk between two parties. And that was all. It's to your mind, did those ceasefire accords intensify the situation in Cambodia as a result? Response, as I understand, As a consequence, yes, there were some impacts. 
in the past Vietnam themselves lived in their own territory after the peace agreement the Vietnamese prepared themselves I believe it was during the election to enter the Cambodian territory in thousands of uh, number and that caused unsatisfaction on the Cambodian people's side and not only that they pressure the Communist Party of Cambodia to join hand with them to come up with a peace agreement. Pol Pot asked, How could I sign a peace agreement with or with whom? And the response was, to have a peace agreement with Lunnol. And Pol Pot said, No, I would not make any peace agreement with Lunnol. If America wanted to cease war in Cambodia, Kissinger should come down and sign a peace agreement with Democratic Cambodia. That was the event. So the liaison with Vietnam and Cambodia was not that humble at the time and was not that close. Vietnam tried their trickery to compel Cambodia to sign the peace agreement with Vietnam. And at that time, Le De Thor conveyed his message that Kissinger conveyed a message to the CPK that if we do not cease the war, that they would destroy Cambodia within 74 hours. That was what conveyed, but we did not know whether that was actually the speech by Kissinger or it was the intention of the Vietnamese, but that what was the Vietnamese told us. They even scared us. They said that the American Americans has a very modernized weapons, including the B fifty two. They could spot a bridge. They could even spot a head of a person or if three or four people under the tree could be spotted by the B-52 bomber. And they continued that, you comrade, you could not continue the struggle alone. And in the world, no one ever struggled by Itself, we need to rely upon one another. By then, Pol Pot replied that, of course, I respect the friendship between Vietnam and Cambodia, but at the present, the Lunar forces were weakening, and I must continue the war. If I signed the peace agreement as of that proposed by Vietnam, my struggle will fall, will disappear. Purple's message meant that Vietnam would then control Cambodia, but he did not use the word directly. 
That was what happened based on my recollection, and that was the influence or the impact as a result. Mr. President, I feel exhausted. Some, some, uh, concrete. Council. Mr. President, my client said he is exhausted and he could not catch the question that well and he would seek a break. I have only two more questions to ask. Is Mr. Nunchia in a position to answer only two more questions? Ms. Nunchi, I'd like to request for leave to use the bathroom. The President, yes, uh, you can go. Security guards, could you escort him to the bathroom? The President, the time is now appropriate for a break. We shall have a 20-minute break, and we shall resume after that. <laughs>